I like to choose estates which aren't architecturally famous, let's put it that way, because I think that people might misinterpret the reason I'm painting them. I just want something which is really very ordinary, that could be kind of both everywhere and nowhere in a sense. My father had a friend, Edward Borden, who was teaching at the Royal College, and, and I think he asked Edward uh, where I should apply or what I should do, and so Edward said, come down and see me at the Royal College. So I put some paintings in a van and were driven down and stood in the stairwell, the bottom of the stairs at the Royal College and showed him the works, and he said he was very complimentary and encouraging. And I said, um, well, where should I apply? Can I come here? And I said, no, 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 you can't come here. You have to go somewhere else first. And uh, so I said, well, where should I go? And he said, well, I'll try Camberwell. And this was in the kind of middle 50s. So there was um, still an air of austerity around, both in terms of how people live, but also, I think, in terms of the sort of painting that was being done at the time. There was quite a lot of social realism and kitchen sink work and so on being done by, by painters. And, uh, and that fitted in very much with the, with the, with the kind of mores of the, of the Euston Road School, which I say was based very much um, on uh, looking at your local surroundings and, and, and painting it in a, in a, in a uh, anti-rhetorical way, really. I tend to base bodies of work around a particular housing estate that maybe over a period of two or three years I get to know quite well and, um, and make some paintings about it. And, uh, and the current, current uh, painting, which you see behind me here, is um, based on a housing, well, a housing couple of blocks really in um, Herne Hill. With the earlier works, I would do a lot of sketches and studies outside, actually on site, using my car as a kind of mobile studio and do small works in it, or indeed sometimes outside, but then create larger, major works in the studio from the information I would get. I think it's quite important that you can relate physically to a painting on a wall, really. I would go out maybe first thing in the morning, do a drawing of a, of a couple of housing units, come back and paint those units, and then the following day do the same again. And so you'd build it up bit by bit. I've been using photographs more recently in conjunction with the actual painting and indeed quite with quite a lot of the more recent works. And in fact, all the, the early child block paintings I did uh, where I wasn't using ph photographs very much, the distortion would be from the drawings I did. I kept changing my mind about that. I mean, sometimes I try and, as it were, straighten the perspective up so that one's not aware of it. And other times um, I react to it. Of course, when you're down there, uh, you notice all sorts of things, how the way the buildings get stained by the weather, the way the buildings get graffitied. And it seemed appropriate to try and incorporate these elements within the painting. By using the graffiti, one can maybe introduce an element of humour or uh, relative statements as little vignettes. Other times I've introduced maybe a landscape bang in the middle of a, of a tower block and then I just in, introduced maybe a kind of rural landscape in the, uh, sort of in the middle of it just to contrast the idea. I'm not sure if I'd been living in the country I'd been painting something very different like ploughed fields or something like that. I mean I call it art for all, you know that's me, you know, just sort of 
which is simply a kind of illusion that this looks like this, this could be a kind of um, Malevich or something. And, and um, uh, within the context of, 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 of uh, urban living in tower blocks. And, My parents were living in Sheffield from about 1952 or three to, to about 1960. My dad was a vicar. He had a, a big parish in the country in Cheshire and we lived in a fantastic house and right in the country. He left that living and went to a complete opposite to a pretty run-down parish in Sheffield in Upperthorpe. But of course, I wasn't living at home then. I mean, I was, I was down in London studying and, and so on. And of course, it's a time of change because a lot of the 19th century back-to-back -back houses which had been built for the people working in the steelworks were being pulled down and uh, high-rise blocks were being put in their place. I had my first show at the Serpentine Gallery in 1971 when I was 36. And from that show, I was taken up by a, a private dealer, Angela Flowers. And Frank Constantine, who was, I think, running the Sheffield Galleries during that period, used to visit Angela's, Angela Flowers' gallery in London quite regularly. And he bought paintings of mine from Angela and offered me a kind of retrospective show in the Mappin Gallery in 1974. Call it a retrospective is a rather grand name probably because I was only painting for about 14 years, but um, the Mappin Gallery was, was the ideal space for it really. Um, Roy Huttersley came and, and visited prior to the opening and so on, which was nice. So I had quite a lot of success with the early terrace house paintings and Frank bought one of them from Angela because the painting he'd bought was half a painting. I mean it could be sold and seen like that but it had the other half of the house so he bought the other half to go with the half he'd already bought so if you see it now in the Mappin Gallery or, or, or Graysway which is you'll see it is actually two paintings which, which, which join together um, and indeed he died that not, not that long ago, and, uh, and they used that painting in his obituary. Um, so somebody sent me a copy of the paper, a bit like reading your own obituary in a way. It's slightly strange, but, uh, so, but, but it was, um, I, I was very pleased that they used it uh, to remember him by. <laughs> 